Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Luke chapter 11, verses 14 through 28. The Reverend Dr. Richard Serena is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. The reading is from Luke chapter 11. Now Jesus was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke and the people marveled. But some of them said, he casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, while others to test him kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul, if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, and finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. As he said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts at which you nursed. But he said, Blessed, rather, are those who hear the word of God and keep it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we sort of tricky to preach on the gospel lesson from the previous Sunday, um, not because you've heard it and know all about it, but because I'm always tempted to steal my pastor's sermon. Uh, regrettably, my pastor was out of town this past week, and Kevin Robson preached for us, and so I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> Instead, it's all on me. So, so here we see Jesus rebuking opponents who deny that he casts out demons by the power of God. They claim that he does so by the power of the devil. Now we know from the parallel versions of this gospel in Matthew and Mark that our Lord's critics were not the common populace, they were the teachers of the law. You know, the secretaries of synod, the sim profs, the CTCR members and their underlings like me. While Jesus repeatedly has pity and compassion upon the masses, he responds very differently to these Pharisees and scribes. He, in fact, castigates them for their heresy. And you know what else? For their downright lack of logic. They accuse him of casting out demons by the power of the devil, which would obviously make no sense. Why would the devil cast out his own demons? On the contrary, Jesus makes unmistakably clear what he is doing. He is casting out demons by the very power of God. The eternal Son of God and second person of the Holy Trinity is present among them in human flesh doing battle with the devil and his demons. Jesus doesn't need Satan to cast out demons. He's come to defeat Satan and his demons once for all. The fight is on. It's time to choose sides. See, when it comes to Christ, there can be no neutrality. We can't equivocate. It's either Jesus or it's the devil. It's either the power of God or it's the dominion of the evil one. It's either the kingdom of heaven or it's the hell of Satan. There is no middle ground. There is no in-between. There is no straddling of the fence. There is no one foot in, one foot out. There is no friendship with the devil, with his demons, or with the world, where the devil rules as the prince of the power of the air. This is a dramatic 
battle, an apocalyptic battle between Jesus and Satan for the souls of sinners, and you Christians are smack dab in the middle of it. How's that going for you? How's that fight feel? Does it feel like you're winning? Daily, it seems as if culture drifts further and further away from God's moral law, and that's to say nothing of saving faith in Christ. Churches are at odds amongst themselves. Those you love fall prey to the wickedness of sin and death. You see friends and peers slowly abandoning the faith. You find yourselves miserably failing in the face of your own temptations to sin. If we're in the middle of an apocalyptic battle, it sure doesn't feel like we're winning most days. At least to human appearances. But that's just the thing. The battle was never yours to win in the first place. You can't defeat the devil and you can't defeat his demons. You never could. The victory belongs to Christ and to Christ alone. That's why he describes himself the way he does in this lesson. While on the one hand, the devil is the strong man who can defeat you, Jesus, in this lesson, is the stronger man. Jesus is the stronger man. He is the stronger man who alone can defeat the devil. He has shown you that time and again. Jesus cast the devil out of heaven as lightning from the sky. Jesus is that promised seed who crushes the head of the serpent. Jesus had battled with the devil in the wilderness and resisted his temptations. Jesus cast a legion of demons into a herd of pigs who ran to their death because they were so fearful of the Son of God. The demons know who Jesus is and they shudder at the thought. It is your Lord Jesus who will finally consign the devil and his demonic battalions to the lake of fire and literally throw the key away. It's indeed your Lord Jesus Christ who beats down Satan under our feet as we pray in the litany. The devil may be the strong man who tempts and deceives you, but Jesus Christ is the stronger man who binds the devil and defeats him. And what's more, Jesus has already defeated him. No matter what the battle looks like on the ground here, where the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking to devour us, know this, your crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ has already won. He parades through his church as if on a victory lap, preaching his word, forgiving sins, giving you his crucified and risen body and blood to show you that he is no longer dead, but is alive. This was never your battle to win. It was always Christ's to win. And he has already won. You want to know something else? You want to know what he's won in this battle? He's won you. That's what he fought for. You with all of your temptations and your doubts and your sins. You with all of your personal struggles and family struggles and church struggles. You belong to Christ now. He purchased and won you from sin and from death and from the power of the devil. He has washed you in his blood at baptism and swept your house clean of sin. He has preached his word to you. He has absolved you of your sins. He has fed you at his table. The battle between Christ and the devil may seem to rage all around you. It may seem like you are losing ground daily. But it was never your battle to begin with. It was always Christ's. He alone can win it. He already has and you, you facing your demons and your sins and your struggles, you are precisely what he has won. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.